Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm coming to you from my couch and not my kitchen table. Uh, so today I wanted to talk about an interesting topic, something I've been meaning to talk about, and that is my relationship with food and my journey with Weight Watchers and diet changes I've had now. And I just think it's an important topic to talk about because especially with like body inclusivity and things happening in today's world. It's something that I've been very open about with my friends and family and I just thought it was something I should be open about with you guys. So first off, I will go and say this, that I've never really been like a super skinny kid. I basically, my weight problem started when I was around nine or 10. I had a surgery when I was nine and I gained a lot of weight after it. And during that time, my dad had started doing Weight Watchers as he was gaining weight. And I had become like pretty chunky as a kid. And my dad was noticing this. And because I'm also very short in stature, uh, my weight does not, I need to always be very tiny, essentially, like petite to be healthy or that's considered a healthy weight. So I was put on Weight Watchers as a kid. My dad had found that, I think it was the leader who was leading his Weight Watchers programs, also did a special kids program, but you had to get a doctor's note to be put on it. And it was kids that were in middle school, like going into middle school like myself through high school. So I got a doctor's note, I was put on the program, and this is where everything just kind of like happened and started with me. So here I was, 10 years old, I'm on Weight Watchers, and I lost quite a bit of weight in a year, and I felt really good. I was in fifth grade, my teacher was even really good about me being on the program, she knew, and then I go into middle school. And also being on Weight Watchers when you're 10 is not easy, because you know, you can't have pizza all the time. And I was eating a lot of junk. But you go into middle school and things change. And you have, you know, a whole different school schedule. And you, I lost all this weight. And then there's these really pretty, really thin girls at school. And I was starting to get more into fashion. And I always loved clothing, but, you know, shopping for clothes when you've lost a lot of weight is a really good feeling. And so, I go to middle school and I don't think I thought I was thin in middle school, but looking at photos, like I was pretty thin. Like, yeah, I was pretty, pretty thin. And my dad had also lost a lot of weight at this point. My mom has always been pretty fit. She was a runner, so she has always like been very active. She still is very active. She doesn't run anymore, but she walks a lot and she keeps really in physical shape. So my parents looked pretty good at this point. Um, my parents also have struggled with food and relationships with food and things like that. So it was kind of passed down to me. You know, as my mom says, I can blame everything on her on the therapist's couch, which sometimes I do. But anyway, <laughs> um, I go to middle school and the, here's the problem with middle school and the problem with being on Weight Watchers when you're a kid. When you hit puberty as a girl and your hormones change, it, it, everything just, it's really hard to keep track. My weight was constantly changing. I started, you know, having boobs, I got my period. The whole female anatomy just totally changed and threw my body off. And by the time I got to high school, I was now like a normal adult and was like 100 pounds, things like that, okay. Got to high school, still didn't feel good about myself. And also by this point, I had stopped going to Weight Watchers meetings and I had stopped tracking. And the reason for that was because one, I didn't feel like I was getting anything out of the meetings. Two, I had become a lifetime member. And when you become a lifetime member on Weight Watchers, you only have to weigh in once a month. So I was really only weighing in once a month. And three, I just, didn't want to track my food anymore. I just didn't want to follow the rules. I felt trapped. So 
I stopped tracking things, not just say I was a bad eater in middle school and high school, but you know, I wasn't really tracking things and I had started, my, my goal weight was constantly changing. My endocrinologist always wanted me at like a really low goal weight, but I could never really achieve it. And I was not a physically fit kid in high school. I am not athletic by any means. I hated gym class. I was not friendly with athletes even in my school. I was a drama kid, I was in choir, I sang, drama club was my sport. I had written gym in high school my senior year and it was a blessing. So I wasn't really exercising or doing things like that. I also didn't even have a lunch period from the time I was a sophomore through senior year because of my class schedule. So I was eating like five or one bars for lunch, which like that's not great. But also in high school, I was home alone more because my parents had other commitments. And sometimes I was home alone for quite a few hours, which maybe I shouldn't be saying this. My parents are not bad parents. I was like 15, 16, like it was okay. I could fend for myself. I didn't touch the stove or anything, you know. Like I was at the age where like, you know, kids babysit other people's kids. So something looking back I realized was I used to eat a lot just to eat and when my parents weren't home I would like eat ice cream all the time and M&Ms um, and you might think why do my parents have these things especially if they watch their weight well we used to have you know low fat ice cream my dad likes to make his own trail mix he still does this and he would buy M&Ms to put in the trail mix and I'm not talking about like bags of M&Ms I'm talking about like the Costco size of M&Ms he still does this so I would eat a lot by myself. Um, my parents also used to buy this cake and would freeze it and I would eat so many slices of it. And I used to go down our basement where our computer was and I would sneak food down there all the time. And then when my parents weren't home, I would just like binge eat a lot. And my weight totally flip-flopped in, in high school. And then I got to a point where I was really not happy with myself. Um, I also, it got to a point where when I had a boyfriend in high school, I didn't like to eat in front of him. I never did. I never liked eating in front of boys. Um, I was always really weird about that. I didn't like eating in front of certain people. And it's kind of sickening like when you throw fit because you don't want to go out to dinner with your parents and your boyfriend just because you don't want to eat in front of your boyfriend, even if you're not eating anything bad. I just, I, I just couldn't. I thought that guys in high school liked girls with who were skinny and pretty and a lot of people in my high school didn't look like me. I had boobs, I had curly hair, I was also Jewish, I didn't grow up with a lot of Jewish kids. So I was like, I felt very much like an outsider and I physically didn't like the way I looked. And finally my senior year I went into overdrive and at this point Weight Watchers had changed their program quite a bit. And my dad and I would always go, my dad does, also doesn't really go to meetings, but we would always go to the meetings when they changed their plans. They, had, they actually gave you a little more flexibility in the new plan. So I started following it and I started doing Zumba classes with my mom. I had the Zumba We Fit thing at home too. And I got really into it and I was like, you know what? I don't have the boyfriend anymore. I'm gonna be senior in high school. I wanna look really good for prom. And so I went into overdrive and I lost quite a bit of weight got down to a really good goal weight. My endocrinologist was very happy. I felt really good. I was in good shape. My boobs did not shrink though, which I was not very happy about. And I thought I looked really good. I got into a size four Abercrombie and Fitch jeans and I wanted to cry. I could not believe I had done that. Kept the weight off and then I went to college. Go to college and I gained the weight back. And this was mainly because I decided once again to not track. I was on my own. I had, my schedule was in my hands. It wasn't in like my parents' hands or my school's hands necessarily. And I also lived in New York City. I thought that I was just gonna walk around New York City and be really thin and lose more weight or keep the weight off, but I didn't. I was drinking so many sugary Starbucks, Starbucks drinks. It was disgusting, disgusting, excuse me. I you know had to have a dining hall plan because i lived in a dorm without a kitchen uh which changed after my first year of college but i just wasn't watching myself and that was really hard especially because i told myself i was going to keep the weight off and not only that but going to fashion school like the whole inclusivity moment in fashion didn't exist when i was in college and this was i graduated only five years ago 
it didn't exist back then. Back then, it was still very much this weight conscious world. We're talking 2010 when I started college. It was very, so almost 10 years ago I started college. Wow, that's, that's crazy. But it was still very weight conscious back then. Like if you weren't thin and you were in these classes, even though I was on the merchandising end, I felt, I felt very out of place. And I felt like it was a very unspoken thing that if you weren't thin, you weren't cool and things like that. And if you didn't dress a certain way, like it, the whole thing was just like a lot. Um, so I didn't feel really good at school. I wasn't even trying to date boys at that point. Um, I hated the way I looked. And over the course of me starting college and ending college, I had gained probably, I went from like 113 pounds to about 100 pounds. 30 so I gained quite a bit of weight my body did change though I will say that because I was more physically active I had better stamina my legs like I used to have cankles and for the first time in my life I like kind of actually sort of had ankles um, I had like calf definition in my legs I had my stomach wasn't I didn't feel like I had a beer belly like I definitely felt pretty physically fit um, but at the same time, like I still wasn't as thin as I'd like to be, but also, you know, my body was changing too. I wasn't a teenager anymore. I was go growing into a grown adult. So that also, I'm sure was a thing. Um, but yeah, by the time I graduated college, um, I was at what was then my heaviest. I also, my senior year of college, decided to go back to doing Zumba classes and that really helped but I still just like really didn't like the way I looked. And when I graduated college, what was also really hard was I had to move back home for a few months. So I had to move back to my parents' house. I was commuting back and forth to my job in the city. I didn't really have a social life and I would eat at weird times because I would have to get up so early to go to, um, you know to go to work so I would eat like breakfast early and then I would almost have like a second breakfast when I got to the office it was just like a whole chaotic thing yeah it just felt awful and again was not following the Weight Watchers program so I finally moved back to New York City finally and I started a new job and by the time I was 25 I was on a team of with three other very thin women and I would look at their eating habits and like, for example, one of the women I worked with, even if she would have like a bagel for breakfast, she would then have like a green juice or a salad for lunch. Like she would balance it out. And then I noticed they were, they wouldn't eat like big portions, but they would also like take their time eating their food and things like that. And here I was eating like disgusting tuna melts that didn't really make me feel good either. So I went into overdrive again and I decided one day when I went to go weigh in at Weight Watchers and I went to the exact same Weight Watchers I went to in college to weigh in, where I would just go weigh in and leave. And at this point I was paying Weight Watchers because I had been over my goal weight for so long. So there was this guy whenever I would go weigh in and I decided one day to just sit in his meetings and I really enjoyed his meetings and I realized that I really needed to take control of my life and take control of my health. And I decided to follow the program that it was at the time, which is similar to the green program now on Weight Watchers. And by the way, I'm not sponsored by Weight Watchers. This video is not sponsored. I've just been a member for a very long time. And I took control of myself. I lost a lot of weight and I got back down to about a, the, almost the same weight I was um, when I was in high school, like around like 118, I was even like 118 in college. And I, and the numbers shouldn't matter to you. I'm just saying that cause like, I don't know. It kind of helps me remember where I've been. And I remember going to London for my 25th birthday and I, I just looked really good and I felt really good. And I did so much walking around and probably one of the lowest I've, I've gotten and I even, but that was even below my goal weight at the time. And finally, um, when I, about a few months after I turned 26, 
I got a new job, same company, but it was a really stressful job and I started to gain the weight back. I also like was going to happy hour more at work and going out to dinner with some with friends and coworkers more than I was used to and that didn't help either. And you also get to a point at Weight Watchers where you think once you hit your goal weight that that's it, you don't have to do the tracking anymore. Like you did all the hard work and you're done, but you're not, you never are. You always have to keep doing it. And that was the path I fell into. So I stopped doing the hard work and other factors happened. I was convinced I had like polycystic ovarian syndrome because it got to the point where I got to my heaviest and I was like a, almost 145 pounds. Like I weighed more than my dad, my dad's, but my dad's like a really short dude. And that was scary and I was gaining weight so quickly. So I went to a new endocrinologist. I went to my regular doctor. I spoke to my gynecologist and they were all pretty sure that I had polycystic ovarian syndrome um, just from my symptoms. I had a sonogram done even though it didn't show anything. My endocrinologist was like, you probably have like underlying, like it's, it's underlying clearly. So I have to be careful with that. I started seeing a dietitian. Did I follow her plan? Not really. And then everything came to a halt very recently when I had an episode of pancreatitis. And if you don't know what pancreatitis is, it's when your pancreas becomes inflamed. If you have um, gallstones, this can happen. If you're diabetic, it can happen. Some medications can cause it to happen. I am, for me, my, I'm wondering if it's because I was eating a lot of processed foods and I don't know what happened, but, and there's really no cure for it or anything. You just kind of have to change your diet, but I had this happen and I was um, recommended a gastroenterologist by my coworker and I went to him and he was like, you have to cut out all grains, all gluten, all dairy, and all starches from your diet. You need to essentially cleanse your body. So I have been doing this for over a month now and I've lost a lot of weight because of it. Um, I've lost like over 10 pounds in the last last like like month and a half ish and if you're on Weight Watchers you can lose that much weight like if you follow the program honestly like if you do um so I'm still going to the, the dietitian slash nutritionist working with her and working with my with my stomach doctor but I have to say that that wasn't easy maybe that was a wake-up call for me to change my diet and things um, I do feel good not eating dairy. I do feel good not eating bread. My skin has cleared up quite a bit. And I was also told that dairy and, and bread and things definitely can, you know, inflame your acne um, and whatnot. So yeah, it, it was really hard though the first few times and it has been very hard. It's gotten easier but it's not easy when I go out to dinner with my friends because I have to pick places that I can eat the food and that's that's been tough. But it has been a really huge wake up call and I don't suggest you do this because I'm kind of on keto and paleo at the same time right now, but don't do any of these crazy things unless your doctor says so. And even Weight Watchers too, like before you do it, you might want to consult with your doctor. But anyway, um, I feel good. I have learned that I need to stop caring so much about my appearance in a way, like in my weight. I need to stop being harsh with myself and it's taken a really long time. I totally had a breakdown with my dad and I was like, dad, you don't know, like you you putting me on Weight Watchers so young, like really messed up my body image and my and how I look at myself and, and it really messed me up when I got older and I look back thinking on it like, why did I have to go on a plan when I was so young? Like there could have been something else that maybe that I could have done. But at the same time, Weight Watchers has become a total lifestyle for me. And this is where I go into the part, if you're interested in Weight Watchers and my general experience with the plan, besides my experience with my weight and everything. So number one, I think Weight Watchers is a really good weight loss plan. It's also probably one of the least expensive ones in terms of monthly cost. You can weigh yourself and not go to a meeting and pay only $30 a month, or you can go to a meeting and get weighed there and pay $45 a month. And I think a lot of other programs, 
are a little more expensive. You don't have to buy Weight Watchers food either. That's totally on your own. And I also think it's the easiest plan to follow in terms of not being very restrictive. You can restrict yourself as much as you want, but you can essentially eat whatever you want. You just gotta count the points. And I also think now, so now Weight Watchers has three plans you can choose from where it used to be you know, the same plan for everyone. So they have a purple, a blue, and a green. The green is the most similar to one of their older plans where you get the most points for a day. Um, the blue is was essentially their freestyle program. And then there's a purple plan where you, you only get like 16 points during the day. And the way that points are also counted now is a little more scientific. They look at saturated fats and protein and sugars and things like that instead of just calories, protein, and fat essentially. Um, so, and fiber. Fiber was a big one they used to count. So that's been really good. And also Weight Watchers has really evolved in the sense that when I was, when I first started on it, you know, a lot of these low point foods had so many additives and sugars in them, like low sugar, low fat things, you know, they all have chemicals in them pretty much. But now they are really trying to get people to cook for themselves and not eat super, not eat these foods with alternative things and chemicals in them and whatnot. Um, and that's also been really helpful. And that's why they changed the way you count points for a food. Um, something I would suggest if you are on Weight Watchers, and this is something I have done myself, is if you do on the plan, alcohol is quite a lot of points. So it, it can be hard if you like to socially drink and go out. But I will su say like, I've kind of actually stopped really drinking just cause I don't like the way I feel when I drink. So I'm like hardcore ginger ale girl now when I go to the bar, but, um, yeah, it, this is not something I would suggest if you go on it. Also, like I said, you might want to consult with your doctor and something you also might want to do if you're interested in Weight Watchers is you might want to consider going to an open house. They have some of these at some of the workshops or the uh, facilities. So I would definitely, um, definitely suggest you do that. But I've had a really good experience with, with Weight Watchers and it truly has become a lifestyle and you should not be afraid to go to the meetings because when you go, everyone is there because they all have the same problem you do. Everyone has there is there because they have a problem with food. They have a problem with control. They have a problem with eating. And that's what's really nice. It's not like going to my regular therapist who I go to every week. Okay, my, my camera cut off. So that means I'm either out of memory or my camera is overheating. So. I will cut it off there and say thank you so much for watching. If you or anyone is struggling with body image and eating disorders and all that, it's okay to reach out for help. It's okay to say you need help. Um, seriously, I've been there. Um, let me know if you guys have had any issues and things like that. Um, or let me know if you're interested in Weight Watchers and what, whatever questions you have. Um, so yeah, I know this was a little bit more of a serious video, but again, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.